treats. We uh, we got started on time. Well, you know, yeah. on time for the time travel episode. That's right. We could on, be late. On brand. Yeah, on brand. We were going to start late, but the time travelers from the future came back and told us to start on time. Right. And they Actually, were we did start late, but this is the second reboot of the episode where the time yeah. travelers were was on time. Mm-hmm. So or you're welcome, Indianapolis. We're the reason you're right. not going to be blown up next week. That's right. Yep. Thank us by not giving us COVID. Welcome to the new alternate reality. I would not want to take responsibility for this particular split in the timeline, but Ornan says, time travel. Right. And they are here. We have summoned them. Good I evening. I call Ornan is a big fan of time travel, so. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. I think Ornan has a PC that time travels a lot and is feisty. A feisty time traveling PC. Yeah, I know. Who the fuck? Right. Um, or not, I'll confirm. I might be making that up, but I, I think I remember reading something about that. I think I do, too, a vague recollection, um, though it may be. Um, I am... Uh, I was checking Twitter, as I am often wont to do, and mm-hmm. I see somebody who says that they... Um, it was a, a tweet by... Uh, Matt Maybray, who says, I was reading Danger Zones from Green Ronin Pub. That's us mm-hmm. at Green Ronin Pub. And was pleasantly surprised. It is. It is really is. Uh, surprised to see a reference to Disney's Gargoyles and one of my favorite episodes, no less. And we have been investigating this for... That's Crystal, right? I'm it's positive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, almost certainly. I mean, Crystal's oh, love of Gargoyles is only second to her. Love Absolutely. Teenagers. You heard yeah. it here first. Three hours since that tweet, and we've been investigating nonstop. Mm. Um, you know what? I'm going to drop this modesty shield because I just hope people find the Page Master reference I left in Danger Zones. That's the but real. Somebody found that, right? I'm sure. I hope so. It's not hidden really well. <laughs> well, you know what is hidden too well. Us. Uh, Your faces. Hello, guys. Hello. You know, interesting that we uh, embark on an investigation into whom Oomst is responsible for the Gargoyles reference. And Crystal's not here today. Hmm. Right? Funny hmm. thing, that. Mm-hmm. Actually, Crystal's uh, hanging with family. It's like she knew somebody wanted to praise her and she didn't want to be here for it. <laughs> yes. Her sense that of that is uncanny. Exactly. Mm-hmm. That's exactly right. So it's Moom Ammo, or as you may know it, Mutants Masterminds Monday, and uh, a great program today because um, we're sharing a first look, a, a a a dive of some depth into the um, Astonishing Adventures, the Time Travel Trilogy. Right? Am That's I saying correct. that right? Absolutely. That's now, Alex. Right. You're, you know, when it comes to the mastermind um, in this in this uh, scenario, you are that mind. I am, in fact, the, uh, well, at least the undergraduate mind behind the uh, time travel <laughs> trilogy. <laughs> um, that's not true. I dropped out of college. So follow your dreams, kids. Um, follow your dreams. <laughs> but, yeah, we are working on a trilogy of time travel adventures. I'm thinking about calling it the Chrono Crisis. And this is three adventures that fall fall all along the timeline of Earth Prime. Um, kicked off by one particularly troublesome associate uh, named Gabrielle. Uh, she was once an architect for the organization known as the Associates that is in the Time Traveler's Codex. But her designs were increasingly vetoed by the Associates. Her designs on what the timeline should look like. You know, how time should flow, what events should happen in what order, all that fun stuff. So, sick of editorial interference, she jumped ship to the Future Kin, another organization that's detailed in the Time Traveler's Codex. And she believes the associates were stifling her creativity, and she has a much more exciting idea for what the timeline can look like. Um, I kind of describe her as like a jilted artist looking to literally make their, her mark on history. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. kind, of a, kind of a history stylist. 
Yeah, yeah. She um, her yeah. job is supposed to make sure events go in the right order, but her definition of what the right order is is not exactly yeah. everybody else's definition. Now, would, so I get I get an increasingly sort of um, Loki vibe from mm -hmm. uh, uh, the associates and the, the future kin as mm -hmm. time as no no pun intended as time goes on um, that you know they're they're sort of like this you know trans temporal version of the office. That was the vibe I was getting when I was reading through the Time Travelers Codex. I was like, is, "This is the Time Variance Authority, isn't it?" But we wrote this way before then, so right. Well, yes and no. Before before Loki the show, not before the TVA in the comics. Right. right, right. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I have a question for you. What would you describe uh, her aesthetic? Mm. Chaotic. Um, okay, I like. I think she is the kind of creator who loves taking disparate elements and smashing them together and making that the whole pitch of her story. So she's like, what if it was Dresden Files in space? Or what if it was <laughs> Star Wars and the Age of Piracy? Or yeah. vampires, her, but also Archie comics. Her pitches use the word meet a lot. Like, a lot. It's like this meets this plus meeting this. <laughs> right. Yes. A blend of this with a drop of, I like that a lot. Um, uh, hear me out. Now, I know that you've you've mapped this out and that there's, you know, you've got, I, I, I read uh, the outline um, and uh, I'm enthralled uh, and I'm certain we won't give away all the secrets, but I, I want to make a pitch. A villain mm -hmm. by the name of Cronald. Cronald? Cronald. Yeah. Is it Cronald McRonald? <laughs> Uh, you know, I tried to make that work, and it just wasn't quite clicking. But I, I you know, I offer that to you free of charge. Just so you take that and let it simmer and marinate. Take that uh, for what it's worth. <laughs> well, we do kind of have a Cronald in oh, the you? form of a first edition Mutants and Masterminds reference that I think a lot of people are going to get a kick out of. Um, we're bringing Remlock the Rover back from first edition. Oh, that's right. Paragons, I think. Uh, Paragons or Meta. Uh, metaphor. Metaphor. So he's coming in, and he's going to be sort of the time travel vehicle for the heroes as they go around uh, from location to location. <laughs> Cronald McTimey or Cronald Duck. Yeah, yeah. Both of those uh, are awful, and I love it. Um, you know, Alex, I like I Cronald the Chrono Pirate. I like that. I like Cronald right? the Chrono Pirate is very good. Uh, I also, just in case, folks, um, I, I don't want you to feel um, ignored, but uh, a good Moomamo unto all of you, and thank you so much for the kind words and got some of our patrons talking about the drops um, that we did. So, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, and uh, Claude has arrived. Um, the other Claude. thing, I, when I, Alex, when I think about your work and what you do and how much you just love Mutants and Masterminds, and a long time, you know, uh, creator of stories and all that. When you're putting this stuff together, do you feel kind of like a kid in a candy store? Like, take a especially, picture. especially with this one, I did because <laughs> I was like, what are all the fun, silly ideas I've always wanted to put out in the world that don't make sense in a regular continuity? <laughs> I like okay, oh, so that makes sense in the you know this is uh, you know timey wimey stuff, so you can kind of mm -hmm. have a little fun. I like that. I like it a lot. Yeah, and I really want it with Gaviel. I really wanted to lean into some of my frustrations uh, as an editor. So I, I sort of like, and as a, and as a longtime RPG player, I sort of liken her to a writer who chooses to write her novel in second person because no one else does it, and it's really deep if you think about it. Or like um, that sort of antagonistic relationship players have with a really railroady GM sure. when they decide not to follow their plot. And I think that's something else that I really wanted to lean into with her personality. I like that. I like that a lot. So, and that's kind of a fun sort of, you know, uh, breaking down that, that, you know, as a commentary on, on the craft and all of that. I mean, that's fun. I think people enjoy that as well. Yeah. Um, and I wanted her to have a motivation that wasn't just like, I'm going to destroy all time because time. I don't know. Right. <laughs> because time. Right. Exactly. Cause it really bugs me time. Um, speaking of time travel, uh, Sean Vieira shares that, uh, uh, just found and watched a time travel movie this weekend. Biggles. Never heard of it. I think I've that's a deep cut, Sean. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
so my question is, you know, how 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 would you like to kind of lay this out? Do we want to sort of um, dig into sort of the design intent, or you want to uh, tell a bit of the story and get into some of the the, the finer points? Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of motivate driving factors behind this particular trilogy of adventures that I want to sort of talk about. Um, I really wanted this. Uh, this is sort of my first big go do what you want, Alex thing <laughs> uh, after Starhaven, which I got to work with Crystal and Steve on. Um, but I wanted this to be a fun, a fun little adventure path that could show just what kind of fun adventures and how much creativity and flair for the wondrous strange we can force into mutants and masterminds, because this is such a fun cinematic and narrative driven game where the heroes are so powerful and there's so many times that you get to ask, what do you want to do instead of saying, no, you can't do that, which I, that's what draws me to superhero games in general. Um, but I also wanted to take a chance to flesh out some of the personalities and identities for the time travel villain archetypes in the time travelers codex, mm. um, because we have that wonderful art for them. And I wanted to, we wanted to put some kind of name and per, a little bit of personal flair to those characters uh, which is something that I gave the three writers who were working on this with me to do. I gave each of them one of those archetypes, and they got to do the personality and the history of those characters, which is a fun little bit of creativity for them. And I wanted to do a, um, I wanted to do a story that was a little higher power level than I've been doing recently. So it was just a lot of things that all came together for this particular series of adventures. Nice. How how long have you been working on this? Uh, we've been working on this since March of this year. Mm -hmm. And the, I love dra it. the first drafts of the adventure are finally coming in. Uh, I've seen Adventure 1 and Adventure 2, and I'm really, really excited. That is awesome. And one of the things that I, you know, just so everybody knows, um, there's so much going on behind the scenes. Like, just so, so mm -hmm. much. I, you... Yep. Detroit's Did voice going. Apparently, we just you would just be up that said we're having some connection issues. So okay. people, um, yeah. Jason asks, uh, what PL range is this aimed for? Uh, this is a PL eleven adventure series of adventures. Okay. Uh, a bit of a bump got, from the usual. Yeah, we I've got some uh, how to adjust it up to PL twelve or PL thirteen as well. So I'm aiming right. at PL eleven because I know a lot of GMs like to hang out in PL ten to twelve. They don't like to go much higher than that for their characters. Nice, nice. Uh, Claude's reaction, ooh. But it was a null cap, so maybe it might have been more of a screen. I also think a lot of people like to stick to the even level power level, so I went to 11 because it made mm -hmm. my wizard brain. Well, plus, now you can actually say this adventure goes to 11. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. Or and non, I am including uh, the ability to go down a couple power levels as well. Yeah, so uh, talk to me about right. that mechanic for for the uninitiated. When when a you know uh, a recommended PL uh, that is sort of how that particular adventure or you know encounter has been crafted. How hard is it to go up or down? Um, that's actually something that we're including in the additional text for the astonishing adventures assembled section that I'm writing right yeah. now. <laughs> um, but one of the things I like to do for my um, for my astonishing adventures is when I'm designing an encounter, I like to set the number of NPCs based on how many heroes are present and modify that number to higher or lower to make it more challenging. So if it's a group of 10 or not 10, that'd be insane. I ran a group of 10 people last week. Or we right. say, <laughs> that, but. Um, but a group of like four power level 10 characters, I'll say include, include two PL six minions per hero. Or if I want to move it up, I can move that power level or the amount of minions up, and that's that's sort. Of, there's guidelines in there that I'm working on. Yeah, yeah. Or or shares. Uh, if I couldn't play because my sweet time traveling boy is PL ten, I would have been so sad. <laughs> you just made their day. I'm glad I can make your day. And I love hearing about people's characters, so I try to remember them when I when I hear about them. Absolutely, so please, yeah. If you're coming to Gen Con, come up and geek out with me. I would love to. I would love that. You know what? I was going to say, you know, we're, we're going to be at Gen Con. We should do sort of an impromptu, like a little uh, Moo Mammo gathering. 
you know, like get everyone yeah. together and we'll just talk a little bit and and uh, and hang out. And we we've uh, threatened to do a you know something Muma, two or Sue or something. But uh, we'll we'll get Mumawa. Mumawa, yeah. Mumawi. Yeah. Muma that's a good group gathering. That that is so good. See, you should do this stuff for a living. <laughs> <sighs> I dig it. I dig it. Um, folks, if you have some uh, questions, feel free to uh, drop them in chat and we will do our level best to for them uh, until the very last moment. No, I'm kidding. Uh, when So when I'm looking at this, I, I'm, af I'm afraid to say anything about what I read because I don't want to give out any spoilers. Um, uh, it, how important is that when you know, like, we're going to be sharing this information with the world? Um how much do you keep back before it's published? That's a bad question for me. I keep back as much as the NDA forces me to, because I <laughs> stuff that is going on. <laughs> so you're kind of like one of those people who who's like, I bought you a present and I just have to give it to you now. I bought my wife a switch last week for her birthday and I gave it to her immediately after I got back from Walmart. <laughs> I didn't even wrap it. I had to go to Walmart back. Nice. Very nice. Oh, Aura says unfortunately I'm stuck in Canada. But mm -hmm. uh, oh, uh, but they'll send down a little ghost. Um, they'll be haunting us in spirit. <laughs> uh, Warren Maximus, um, a mumawi, sing a it to the a mumawi, a mumawi. <laughs> I like it. I see a theme song in the making. I did want to ask the chat real quick though. Um, I'm I have yet to see the the bingo card materialize. So we'll we'll wait. I know, that. right? Come on, chat. We're <laughs> waiting. Um, okay, so Alex, uh, uh, take us on a journey. Then, what what um, what should folks anticipate? Uh, what would you like them to know before you know sure. before this is available? Uh, and to answer Squire's question, Gaviel uh, is not going to. My intention is to not have a combat with Gaviel until the finale, but I want her to have an antagonistic, almost ever present relationship with the heroes throughout the three adventures. Uh -huh. She's going to be more of the sort of twisting hologram type of bad guy. Yeah, and she's her presence is going to be felt in some of the weird PLX reality warping things that happen mm -hmm. as the time periods are moving and people are traveling through time. Um, the uh, like for instance, in our first adventure, we're going to go back to the golden age of Freedom City. So uh, there's a sidebar that we're including to power your heroes down a little bit if they want to go back to sort of the mystery men, people in masks with. Two, two, two fisted heroes action. Um, because we're going to go to a a fictitious invasion of Freedom City during World War II by Ooh. the horrible Gorilla Zeitgeist. Oh, Gorilla Zeitgeist. Gorilla. The horrible oh, Gorilla. Gorilla. I think Gorilla I Common Zeitgeist. I see. Yeah. I see. He's a like time-traveling Nazi ghost who, during the 1940s, wound up in the body of an experimental gorilla. Oh. You know, like happens. <laughs> As <Yeah>. you do. <laughs> right. Um, and the heroes are going to get the chance to interact with the Liberty League, so we're going to be standing out. Uh, the Liberty League for the first time, as far as I could tell, in third edition. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Because I, I wasn't able to find stat blocks for them. Jason mentions yeah. this sounds like a great opportunity to introduce some players to some deeper Earth Prime lore. Yeah, yeah, that's my hope. And we're going to be visiting a couple of locations in the Atlas of Earth Prime, like we talked about last week. Um, we're going to go to Red Rock Mesa in Arizona hmm. uh, during the 1800s. So we're going to be having a fun Wild West adventure back there. Uh, with the caveat that Gabrielle has gotten her first little smashed up time periods, and it's going to be the Wild West Savage Lands, where instead of cowboys, we've got dino boys riding around on velociraptors and herding triceratopses. There's, and there's nothing left to love about cowboys and dinosaurs. I mean, nothing. Yeah. Else. No. Now let me let me unpack this a little bit. You said uh, dino boys, so because they ride dinos, right. because they herd dinos. They heard them, I see. Right, cowboys don't ride cows. <laughs> <laughs> that does suggest something very interesting in the ice cream arena, but we'll unpack that later. Mm. Um, let's see. Uh, Zeitgeist, like the m, m equivalent of DC's Ultra Humanite, but less off-putting. Yeah, he, uh, he's a lot like that. 
Yeah. Somehow, I don't know if I'd I call it butt off, but yeah. not. I don't know. That's complicated. <laughs> I mean, he switches bodies without the really gross brain transplant thing, but, you know. But he is he a Nazi. Also still a Nazi. Right. Yeah, and then no one likes it. Wait, what? Zeitgeist is a Nazi gorilla? Well, yeah. he's a Nazi ghost in the gorilla's body. Right, in the body of a gorilla. We don't really know the gorilla's political leanings. <laughs> I see. They were unavailable for comment. Um. Yeah. He wasn't a German zoo in the 1930s, but who knows? Right. Who can say? Who can say? Exactly. Uh, Aura, Aura says, you're making an adventure just for me. And I, as I'm looking at all of the responses in, in chat, people are really resonating with this. You know, did you really put this together with the notion of sort of like a, you know, this is the 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 GM's adventure. Like this is, I mean, not that they all aren't, but like it seems like you've done, you know, I don't want to say fan service because it sounds gross, but like, you know, you, you it sounds like you had a lot of fun in, in creating well, this from the perspective of people who will be playing uh, I tried to write this series of adventures as a love letter to my eight-year-old self who was really excited about everything. Aww. I love that. Um, and I, I think that there is I think there is something to be said for Mutants and Masterminds adventures that are just like wild, off-the-walls shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, John says, Alex, feel free to use my write-up of Six-Gun Gorilla for the Wild West adventure. <laughs> that, feels like I need, that feels like a challenge that I need to include a gorilla in each of the adventures. And right. then, of course, you say fan service, and someone's got to mention Bowman. Right, right. There is a Bowman, and there is a Bowman in the Liberty League. There is Bowman yeah. in Adventure One. See, Claude, there you go. A little something for everybody. Um, okay, so now we we left off at um, uh, Dino Boys. Yeah, the uh, Dino Boys and um, the Immortal Conqueror, who is being developed by. Oh, let me get this right. By. Uh, Jennifer DK, who was one of the uh, one of the original freelance writers for the time travel trilogy. I actually got two of the time travel trilogy time travel codexes writers to come and write an adventure for this. Uh, awesome. So I've got Jennifer DK, Jordan Wynn, and then JK Games is writing the third one. Nice. I didn't mean to hire everybody with a J initial, but <laughs> just worked out. <laughs> yeah, it just worked out that way. Um. But Jennifer, who is work who added the personality for the Immortal Conqueror, who is sort of the same staff lock that like a Vandal Savage would have. Um, she has developed this lady called Oh, what's her name? The Lady of Terrible Scales. Uh -oh. I'm really excited. She's been uh, wow. sort of working in the shadows since being empowered in the prehistoric era. And she's been waiting for humanity to wipe itself out, but she sees the perfect opportunity to do this with um, both Doctor Tomorrow, Remlock the Rover, and the Magic Mesa, Red Mesa. Mm -hmm. so, okay. There's a whole other thing going on, unrelated to the time travel trilogy, or now unrelated the, to Gabriel. Now the Lady of Terrible Scales. Mm -hmm. The Lady of Terrible Scales. Yes. Is that like a skin condition, or is it more of like a? A weights and measures thing. I think it's a weights and measures thing, like a justice yeah. sort of deal, I think. Okay, gotcha, mm -hmm. gotcha. I got gotcha. I don't want to give away too much about her, but I'm really excited. Yeah. Jennifer's done a great job. And I, like I said, I gave each of them, uh, there's the exterminator who's sort of a time-traveling robot that goes back to terminate people. Um, the immortal conqueror who is a person who has savaged time for thousands of years. And then there's the Chronomancer, the Temporal Wizard, is the other one that is being mm. brought in, if you have a personality. Ah, well, good news. You know, I was going to say, I almost did this, but I was running out of time. Um, Gene, I'm glad that you're here. Gene loves Astonishing Adventures. Like, absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, always uh, looking forward to the next bit of information. So, Gene, I'm glad that you were here. I was going to send you a personal note and say, hey, psst, you might want to check this out. <laughs> I'm glad you made it. Absolutely. Um, and then there's a question from uh, from chat. Uh, what flavor would dino cheese be um, in in a world where there were dino boys hurting, rustling, rustling dinos? Right. I don't know. I don't know. My... Do, do dinosaurs provide milk? I don't think most of them are mammals. Mm -hmm. That's a fair point. 
So you get some pretty good omelets from your dinosaurs, though, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. right. I mean, dino eggs, sure. Okay. But well, this is both disappointing and relieving. Um. <laughs> I mean, not to be that guy, but yeah. <laughs> right. if anybody offers you dino milk, don't drink it. That's my advice. Right? Because it's good. probably good. not from dinosaurs. It probably tastes good. like gasoline. Ooh, mm. that's, I know the story there. Right. <laughs> Alex, I think, is doing a what we call a, a callback. Because in addition to doing all these other things and running 10 person oh, right. that's fair. Are... Morton Maximus points out that almonds are not dino- are not mammals either. So, well, that's anyway. true. So you, you get to no milk. Problem. You milk dinosaurs the same way you get chicken broth in my from my father's yeah. explanation. Just soak them overnight. <laughs> you just wring them out over the bowl. Yikes. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll let that sit with everybody um, for for a moment before we get into it. Uh, dino souffle. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Very delicate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's also the question of genetic modifications. So you could there's have always a question of genetic. So speaking of genetic modifications, and um, Squire mentioning that uh, they were enjoying all of the weird animal mutants and uh, Astonishing Adventures. My, uh, one of my contributions to Astonishing Adventures Assembled is the story arc that somehow connects all of those adventures to um, Island of Dr. Circe from uh, the Game Master's Guide. Um, so if you like genetic hijinks uh, intended to modify the human race, you will like that campaign. Uh, it's called the uh, the evolution plot, I believe. I like it. Very yeah, nice. I, I really liked. I really like how Steve's connecting all the adventures together. It made a lot of sense to me. I'm checking the chat here. Um, Mine's more yes. dinosaurs. Mine's Cerebrus Rex as the mastermind behind all six. Oh, well, there you go. I like that name, Cerebrus Rex. Um, Thank you. I love it. It's it's brilliant. It's a good mouthfeel as well. Um, yep. Let's see. Claude asked this question. Would you make PCs pay PowerPoints to have Dino Ringer or give it? I, I should read your things all the way to the end. I thought it was going to be a real question because I trusted you. <laughs> I what I was thinking. That's a uh, one-point feature, actually. Right. I see. Mm-hmm. I see. <laughs> evolution. Yeah, that's great. Simon says, evolution. I love it. Um Okay, so so we've gotten a sort of a, 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 a general uh, outline with some teases and some discussions and, you know, dino ice cream and the whole thing. Um, um, I will say for Squire's question that Dr. Tomorrow makes a pretty hefty appearance. Uh, Remlock the Rover makes a pretty hefty appearance. And then uh, just the villains from the Time Traveler Codex. I like it. I like it. Um, let me see. That was Squire's question. Um, and if I missed your question, feel free to drop it again. Uh, and we will uh, cover that. Um, yeah, wow. Yeah. Chad is hopping today. Um, and I like I, it and I love it. I don't want to spoil too much about the third adventure, but I did include mm-hmm. the phrase time kaleidoscope uh, oh. in the outline. So just all of time being shattered and mixed and matched in a bunch of different fun and exciting ways. Dominus says, what? No clock watcher? Uh, no, I didn't yeah. touch the clock watcher this time. Maybe in the sequel. I mean, that's a little right. easy, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, have everybody show up. <laughs> right. And everybody with some time sort of, you know, relation to time in some fashion. Um, uh, Warden Maximus asks, uh, are there any plans to do any lower PL adventures. There are some plans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there you go, friend. Yes. The answer is um, real quick, just a quick uh, a break in the festivities to remind everybody, no matter where you're at, if you're hanging out on Twitch, if you're hanging out on Twitter, if you're hanging out on Facebook or uh, YouTube, make sure that you are subscribed. Go over there, click the subscribe button, click the bell so that you get a notification when we go live. And you'll get notifications for all of our streams. I mean, we don't stream crazy amount, but it's a good amount, and they're all good streams, and it's a lot of fun. So you'll pick up on things like, uh, Steve, don't we have an actual play coming up? Am I? 
Uh, we do. We have um, my uh, actual play scheduled in mid-August. Nice. Yeah. And so those, of course, are uh, things that we do with the Patreon and our patrons come and, and uh, Steve, uh, uh, Alex, uh, or Crystal uh, exchange um, uh, or, or take uh, turns as the GM. And it's a blast. You'll see some of those other um, uh, live streams of the actual plays because um, we do those live just for everyone else. So you can see what you're missing. It's a ton mm -hmm. of fun. Um, do you want to yeah. share a little bit about it? Just well, just tangential to um, Gene's question, I won't get into too much detail, but I will say that the working title for my August live stream is Icons and Masterminds. So, mm. and folks can take from that what they will. It's going to be good. It's going to be real good. Better show up, Gene. Um, I love it. Uh, let's see. Um, what are we looking at as far as uh, timeline goes? Um, I mean, you know, such as it is. Uh, are we looking at, um, uh, uh, are we a couple months away? Are we, you know, uh, how, how far away are we from? From release of the time travel book? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, we're almost done with primary writing. So mm -hmm. definitely before the end of the year, I would say. Yeah. That's great. Um, I don't know and, 100 how long the whole process takes, but <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And and folks should know too that you know um, uh, we would never commit to a date because that would mean that we would just it would be late. We would just be cursing ourselves as is the way, <laughs> um, and this uh, is the way. Yeah. as is the way. But we'll you know um, as you know things kind of move along, we'll definitely provide updates. Um, but uh, uh, let's see. Dominus is asking, and, might we get some more Starhaven centric adventures? That is something that is on my radar to do. And I mean, I've been yeah. developing a Starhaven adventure every week for the last 14 weeks. So uh, so you're up to your eyeballs and ideas. Yeah, yeah, some of that stuff will be converted into usable material for Astonishing Adventures. Okay, I love it. Outside of just my post-it note that's like, something bad will happen tonight. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you Don't players have rope to hang themselves. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Uh, I like Jonesy's uh, release date just in time. I think I have a note in here that just says Space Goblin Cadillac, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Do you keep all your notes and stuff that you make? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I keep them on my desk just for uh, future Alex's puzzlement. I like that. I do like that. Um, let's see... A question about Astonishing Adventures, um, uh, an Astonishing Adventures rendition of the Hero's Journey Event Horizon adventure as teased in the Cosmic Handbook. Uh, no plans at the moment, but the original notes from that project are still around somewhere, so it's awesome. Interesting. Is that, so, yeah. Is that the Preserver Stone story, Steve? It is. Okay. Uh -huh. It is. I like that is it. one I am very keen to do something with, mm -hmm. but no official plans yet. We've had yeah. a lot of people ask this particular question. Simon mentions uh, or, or wonders uh, the possibility of adventures set on Earth Prime, but outside of the U.S. Yeah, that's, that's something I'm, notion. I'm interested in. You know, what I love about the M&M community at large is that um, no, um, uh, there is always a ready supply of ideas. <laughs> yeah. I will Lots say of... that a lot of the astonishing adventures are, although they're sort of by default set in Freedom City or Emerald City, um, are kind of generically set, you know, somewhere. Um, and a lot of them don't rely too heavily on being a specific American city, as far as that goes. Um, so we, we try to, to pitch it towards being things that can be easily adapted to a different location and not too heavily reliant on where they're set. Yeah, and um, for an example, I know Jay Campbell over on the Mutants and Masterminds Facebook group, um, they, they do all of their Astonishing Adventures in the UK. So they adapted mm -hmm. another war for the UK and they, they do a bunch of fun stuff like that. They have fun write-ups for their adventures as well. Yeah. And it's like classic to, to the whole M&M vibe, which is, you know, take this information and, and make it work. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I like that. Um, 
Chris, I'm glad you made it too. Chris says, uh, uh, amazing. I managed to catch it this time. Yay. I mean, I hope it's the program <laughs> and not something <laughs> else. <laughs> um, oh, no. Yeah, right. Oh, my. Um, now, I'm not familiar with what is uh, Dakana? So, uh, go ahead, Steve. So, Dakana is uh, the uh, advanced uh, African nation uh, where oh, uh, DACA crystals are found, which are our sort of high tech MacGuffin uh, items that power all kinds of weird super technology and things like that. So, Dakana has a very advanced level of technology and always has. Um, even though they've kept it hidden uh, for a long time. Um, so uh, we've, we've played around uh, with the Kana and their, their uh, crystal technology being the source of all kinds of weird science in the Earth Prime setting. That's right. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Chris. Uh, and I, I, I think that I asked this like maybe every quarter. Someone will mention, I'll say, what's that? And then someone will remind me and then I'll go, oh, yeah, right. Um, oh, that thing. Yeah. That, yeah, that exists in our setting. That's right. That's right. Um, and uh, yeah, lots of folks talking about that for sure. Uh, there was a question. Um, I, I love this. I hope Dollface will be in an astonishing adventure. Uh, oh. Who's who's Dollface? Real bad. Interesting character. <laughs> <laughs> Dollface, Dollface was an interesting character. Uh, super villain. Well, arguably super villain. But uh, basically, uh, somebody who has uh, transferred her mind into a, a robot body uh, oh. and, uh, you know, can basically download herself into any number of, of robots who look like anything or anyone um, and uh, may have a bit of a dissociative problem <laughs> because of that. Uh -huh. um, so... Uh, Interesting character. Um, I think that if we had the right pitch for using Dollface as an antagonist in an adventure, uh, or just somebody who is sort of a catalyst for an adventure, it would be an interesting, interesting story. Right. Yeah. Eminem does horror would be my pitch. I was going to say. Yeah, there's, there's definitely some body that. horror sort of associated with Dollface as a character. I like that. I like and that. She's PL twelve, so that feels really high for Dolphin. <laughs> mm. She's bad news. Bad, bad news. Yeah, she sounds pretty, uh, pretty awful. Uh, and uh, uh, Claude mentions that at least one of her bodies is a hero. Mm -hmm. Well, supposedly. Heavy quotes. Big quotes. heavy quotes. Yeah. I like that. Um, let me see here. I had a thing I was going to mention, and then I promptly forgot it, uh, which is how I like to do a live program. Um, but uh, uh, go ahead. Squire Alex. does wonder if this is a full playthrough adventure or if there's going to be breaks following the release schedule. And my that intention, uh, my intention is to release them one after the other. Um, yeah. So that people can get through them quickly, and I will include information inside the adventure saying, if you want to expand this adventure or you want to come up with some interstitial material between adventures, this is how I would do it. Um, that way you have the condensed adventures to do it if you want, or if you want to make it a whole, like, 12-part campaign, you can do that, too. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I like uh, that. Chris, there, there was a bit of background lore about how um, one of Dollface's bodies was actually Chase Adams' imaginary friend um, when he was a kid. Uh, which I can only imagine messed him up, but that's insane. <laughs> yeah, but, yes, Sir Dragon form is friends with uh, Chase Adam. Yeah, yes. Interesting character to kind of you know. Now someone else mentions Claude mentions uh, Waxman. Yes, you know, a Dollface Waxman adventure would be fun. That would be an interesting crossover, right? Yeah, I think there's something there. What's up with Waxman? What's the story there? He makes a lot of scary wax figures. Mm -hmm. I see. Sort of like a puppeteer kind of thing or like a. Like you ever controller? see that movie House of Wax? He's kind of like the guy from House of Wax. Yeah, you know, kind of. I only remember. Oh, I see. Okay. I only remember Paris Hilton in that uh, House of Wax movie. She, she didn't fare well. I'm going to share an image with you, Troy, so you can get an idea of who the wax man is. 
I, th- I love these. They're so fun. Uh, <laughs> Crystal normally gets Yeah, Wolfman's definitely a little more street level than Dollface. Let me know where you're going to drop that because I, I. Oh, I put it over in. Sorry, I put it over in Slack. Gotcha. No worries. No worries. I will. I will pull that open and. Um, I'm pretty sure Waxman is also a threat report, right? Oh, Rose dear. Gallery. Rose Gallery. Oh, Rose Gallery. Okay. And he's PL11, so he's not too far off oh, from. Okay. From Dollface. Well, this is he horrifying. Can, yeah, he could summon living wax creations. He. He's, he can melt people with his hands. He's real bad. Yeah. yeah. You know, is the art that you shared with me art? That's, that's the art from Rogue's Gallery. Oh, yeah, that that's is page, art. I, yeah. Page 127 of Rogue's Gallery. There you go. That's for you, Craig. Um, and I am going to open this image and I'm going to share it because yikes. That is something. Um Okay, so yeah, yeah, it sounds like in addition, you know, to to the sharing information about uh, about this work that you're doing on top of the other work that you're doing, then we're also talking about planning something for Halloween, of course, because that's how these shows work. Um, <laughs> I love it. Let's see. Well, uh, as, as, as the chat and our patrons know, we riff off a lot of this stuff. I mean, you know, it's the reason why you have Starhaven, amongst other things. Truth, yeah, yeah. And now Steve said riff, not rip. You're not ripping you right. off. No. We're inspired. Inspired mm-hmm. by, exactly. Exactly. Pay um, no homage means, to your ideas. That's right. Yeah, but you've exactly. all signed the you've all signed the legal paperwork before you came into the show today. So uh, all of your ideas are ours, including your names and likenesses. Um let's see. Um, but I did see uh, people are interested in some Halloween or horror adventures. That's definitely something that once I'm done with my Cthulhu Awakens adventure, that's definitely something that's an itch I want to scratch. So, look yeah. at this handsome devil, right? Yikes! He's, he's melting that guy. He is really giving that guy the the old candle job. That's something. Yikes! Uh, Klutz is happy to throw ideas at y'all. Yeah, you troublemaker. Um, oh, great! Po- the you know Pope Brandon Brownson made it um one of these streams i'll get here on time you know you're just on time friend um right. horror and time travel sure david uh absolutely um let's see do, do, do. For, uh, for horror and time travel i will refer folks to cthulhu awakens which mm-hmm. is loaded with both yeah yeah on both points for sure um let's see uh, it requires as a kid friendly villain if oh. there ever was one. Yeah, absolutely. That's, a, that's our second question about the Preserver Stone adventure. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, when do we get a precursor uh, stone saga so, adventure module? <laughs> the mouthful. Eventually. Uh, when, when we develop one. Uh, <laughs> if if Christopher <laughs> decides to resurrect that proposal and we can act on it, we will. <laughs> Hope. Oh, Brandon says, horror and time travel? What is this, my prom? Feardom League, says Jonesy. Oh, my goodness. A hero point for you, sir. Uh, I love it. Um, okay, so are we, um, because we could riff like this for the rest of the of the program, but Alex, I want to make sure that we are uh, holding enough space for you to share any additional details or, or uh, concepts or thoughts. Um, I, you know, I think that's just about everything I should share about yeah, yeah. what's going on. I will say, um, the, I, I told the writers, uh, some required viewing or reading for this particular trilogy was Legends of Tomorrow, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, uh, Land of the Lost, uh, all sorts of fun time travel shenanigan stories. Mm-hmm. So we're looking nice. for something fun and we don't want to get bogged down in the physics of time travel or paradoxes. We just want to have a fun, campy adventure in the time stream. I like it. I like it. Um, you know, when we look back on our, our kind of library of, of, of M&M stuff, you know, and I, and I see that stream streamers who are streaming M&M kind of will do, uh, they'll, they'll select from a bunch of different emotional sort of uh, uh, genres. Um, mm-hmm. Have we done more fun and, you know, sort of the classic kind of, you know, camp stuff than serious? I mean, I know that we've done some very serious stuff, um, but uh, what, what do you think the mix is? I'm just curious. 
I think uh, percentage wise, we have a lot more, a lot more fun and whimsy than we do serious and dark adventures. I, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. We got fun stuff like the idiot box and raining cats and dogs, and we like to have fun, and we like our players to have fun. Yeah. 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 I dig it. I definitely do. Um, let's see. I think some of the lower power level stuff, uh, we do some of the sort of street level Ferroberg adventures. Those will be a little more, you know, serious in tone. But yeah, jo- uh, you know, Jonesy asks if there's going to be an M&M Monday. Well, we, we're, we're going to do an M&M someday um, uh, at, at Gen Con. We're just not quite sure. So uh, do anticipate that M&M Monday will be a shifting uh, target. Yeah, uh, indeed. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. Squire says, uh, our last adventure, um, I modified Tesla Girl into the daughter of Dr. Clock. And Long oh, Hunter, my mind is starting cool. to explode with ideas for the series. That's, that, really, that's, that's really cool. Um, so when Gene says, I'd love to see uh, time-traveling heroes archetypes, um, what are they talking about? I think there's a few of those in the Time Traveler's Codex. I was going to say, you will find some in the Time Traveler's Codex. Now, knowing no, Gene... villain archetypes. Knowing Gene, they've got that already. So um, um, explain yourself, Gene. You, are you looking for more stuff? Um, of course, everybody would love more. Um, right. But I, I would love to... <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we've uh, got hero archetypes. We've got hyper-intelligent dinosaur as an archetype. Right? <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, Craig asks, who are Dr. Clock and Long Hunter? Uh, Dr. Clock and Long Hunter are from... Um, they're from an adventure in the Game Master's Guide? Or the Deluxe Hero's mm-hmm. Guide? Um, uh, Deluxe from, uh, Game Master's Guide. Or no, uh, Deluxe Hero's Handbook. I Deluxe Hero's Handbook. Um, yes. They were traveling west to along the Oregon Trail, and they wound up in a weird shadow dark dimension ruled by vampires and werewolves. Yep. Oh. Indeed. Interesting oh, time displaced characters from Emerald City who would actually explain Tesla Girl's whole sort of steampunk aesthetic quite nicely. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Um, let's see Nocter. <laughs> Nocter. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, Robert says there is a bunch um, in the. Do, 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 sorry, um, our chat is on fire, and I love it. Um, but if everyone could just type the same, but just type it slower. Um, uh, let's see. We talked about. So um, we did touch on this a little bit there, uh, Alex. You, the answer to the any modules planned for Star Haven Beyond, the one that comes in the source book. The answer was, you know, in, it's in development. The, it is. In development. Yeah. I'm picking through what ideas feel best and what are, what are actually like full on astonishing adventures, and they are on my yeah. radar too. Nice, absolutely. I'll probably yeah. do some as Patreon actual plays for playtests. So if you sign up for the Patreon, maybe you'll get to see it first. Right. That's right. Yeah. Play it. Yeah. You know, why don't we do this then? Um, since we uh, we've gone ahead and we've mentioned um, we've broken the seal. Oh, one second, while I move some things around. Um, yeah. The Patreon is hopping. Um, lots of people are engaged. We're having a lot of fun. Um, you know, we do, uh, let me go roughly over the schedule. Uh, uh, you know, every month we do an actual play, which is a lot of fun. Uh, it, it, of course, is a, an actual play that is, you know, led by one of the designers. Uh, they're GMing. Um, so it'll be Crystal, Steve, or Alex. And then, um, and, and it's fun, it, original actual plays. I mean, to date, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had some really, we had some yeah. really fun ones. Yeah. Um, all of them have been a blast. Yeah, Sorry, I, think Steve, we, I think the only time we ran an actual astonishing adventure it was a preview, anyway. So. Mm-hmm. Oh right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then, uh, in addition to that, you get your weekly stat blocks um, and PDFs. Uh, right now, we are going through Crooks, and there are, I think. Three million crooks in the crooks book, right? There's a lot of crooks. There's a lot in crooks. I've got five more to do. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. There's there's quite a few, and um, and we make them available. Uh, let's see. Sorry, as I'm playing around with this because I want to show this. 
Um, so here's the Patreon. Uh, you can get in for as low as three bucks. Um, and, uh, and we've got varying benefits for the tiers. Uh, the, the fun thing about this is that you folks are, in addition to getting the, um, stat box and you can kind of see the, some of the stuff that we've done here. Um, here's the, here's your actual play Christmas in July, which is a who that was a lot of fun. They got attacked by John Carpenter, Santa Claus. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. I love it. Um, I love it. Uh, also featuring artwork from our buddy, Stan. Or as I like to call him, Staniel the Manual. And um, uh, let's see, we've got here some crooks, more crooks. Um, look at all these stat blocks. Um, and in addition, some of the stuff that I am really grooving on is the um, uh, sort of uh, uh, alternate rule sets, mm -hmm. which I which I really like. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit, Steve? Uh, sure. Um, so we we also do the what we're referring to as our omniversal variants. Uh, which are occasional rules, options, or expansions, articles, where we, we just pitch and expand upon an idea uh, for a, a particular variant uh, for folks to, you know, kind of take for a test drive, you know, uh, kick the tires, try it out in your game, see how it works. We'd love to hear your feedback if you use any of the variants, uh, how it's worked out in your games, things like that. Gives us a chance to test out some ideas. And uh, eventually, if we, you know, see that they, you know, get some good feedback or some interest, those are things that we may be able to incorporate into actual published material. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's super fun. It is, uh, you know, we we get creative. We add new stuff all the time, um, new ideas. Mm -hmm. And we do a lot of we take a lot of uh, inspiration from people um, in the Patreon. Uh, yeah. You know, so we listen to the patrons and, and take their, and we also, patrons get a vote on the things that we're doing, mm -hmm. which is a lot of fun as well. Um, uh, Jonesy dropped the link in chat, but you're going to want to check out patreon.com slash mutants, A-N-D, masterminds. And uh, yeah, sign up. It's a lot of fun. And um, you also get, depending on your tier, you get like a, a, a perpetual discount code on your uh, M&M merch mm -hmm. and uh and things and uh, yeah it's just a lot of fun uh, let's see a couple questions before we head out for the day and I can't believe that it's already and we started on time yeah. even um, let's see uh, Miami Nights ask is there an ETA on the <clears throat> excuse me on the time travel adventures by the way <clears throat> uh, definitely before the end of the year yeah and and by that we mean um, you know sometime uh, next year no I'm kidding no. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> <laughs> no, my uh, goal, my goal like, is to be done way before December, but uh, yeah. And you know, know how and are. if they're you yeah. know, really in delays, really are. Is this going to be this is going to be print or um, POD oh, and, and PDFs first? PDF first, and okay, gotcha. Um, <laughs> let's of print adventures, Troy. Did we uh, tell folks about the uh, uh, assembled print collection in the works? Uh, we haven't actually mentioned anything about it, but we should. Um, I, I, you know, I'm my my soul is ready, but I wasn't sure that my mouth could do it. Um, you want to talk about it? <laughs> so we're working on our first uh, print collection of some of the existing astonishing adventures, uh, along with some additional text and useful tools and resources for game masters uh, to go with it uh, to provide some added value. Uh, so that is in uh, development and design right now. Uh, so uh, we're working on it for later in the year. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, we're writing, up like, some fun, we're writing up some fun player facing stuff, some fun GM stuff. Mm -hmm. and we're coming. Each of us is coming up with a way to connect the six adventures into a campaign. To make a campaign. Instead of six, instead of six so standalone adventures. Technically, you get three different campaigns out of it. <laughs> And uh, you can vote for who's your favorite if you want to. And why is it Steve? If you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, uh, Squire will be sending you 12 copies. Um, right. Uh, Troy will take your credit card information off the air. Mm -hmm. Yes, or cash. Yeah, or on the cash. air. <laughs> or on the yeah, whatever, you know. I mean, we're all friends here. Um, Miami um, Nights, um, the time travel trilogy okay. won't be as many adventures as Nether War, um, but it is meant to be a um, it is meant to be a fun 
epic little sort of side campaign that you could drop into any any existing series that has time travel in it. And to quote a dear friend, anything's epic if you try hard. That's, That's right. True. Um, okay, friends. Um, uh, Steve, do you have any any kind of updates or things you'd like to share uh, about your world? Um, things going on on your Patreon, or uh, of course, there's Gen Con coming. All that stuff. Yeah, I will be at Gen Con along with the rest of the Green Running Crew. Uh, so if you're going to be there, come by our booth, say hello, mention that you are part of the chat, that you are a patron, that you know uh, we know you by whatever handle you're using on here. Um, so there's a chance I will recognize you. Um, and uh, if folks want you know, to check out uh, patreon.com slash Steve Kenson, that's where I'm doing some icon stuff, including the most recent Icons of Freedom adaptation. And that may have some relevance for something that I'm doing for our actual play uh, in August uh, for the m M&M Patreon. Mm-hmm. I like it. Um, Alex, you got some big plans uh, for a stream tonight. Uh, yes. Um, Jonesy actually shared earlier that I shared a warning that said, I'm sorry in advance for tonight's game. So that'll be fun <laughs> for everybody. A common refrain. Um, also, Dominus X Machina, I, I like that idea. I'm going to write it down. The uh, Ancient Preserver Shipbuilding Facility. Oh, Ooh, there. You've done it. That, put that on the bingo um, sheet. Uh, made an M&M dev make a note. Hmm, um, right. that, that's no small feat. Yeah, um, but uh, say, in an hour, we will be going live at twitch.com, twitch.tv slash Untold Stories Project for our weekly Star Haven campaign uh, every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't know if you noticed, but as he started to describe it, uh, the lights were flickering and flashing, and it got very dire. So uh, yeah, I think you want to mm-hmm. tune in to see what they've got. Yeah, in our, heroes, uh, our heroes just arrived at the scene of Daedalus murdering Dakotaku, and the authorities showing up to be like, what the heck? Associates of Daedalus. So, we'll see what, what have happens. you done? We'll see what happens. Dakotaku. I like to say that. Dakotaku. Right? Um, hey, real quick, uh, uh, Miami Knights, I wanted to say to you, um, love the questions. I uh, really do yeah. and appreciate them. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, there, there are... Uh, we have lots of community venues um, where we try to engage, but there's nothing quite like having you folks here with us, you know, for this short period of time every Monday to answer the questions that we can, to ignore the ones that we don't want to answer. <laughs> um, and, uh, and of course, you know, to, to have a lot of fun in this conversation. Uh, it truly a joy. We really have a great time. Now, if you're sitting on some questions and maybe we missed it in chat, or maybe you've just been just, agonizing over this whatever it may be uh, maybe you've got um you want a, a kind of a, a a sort of a ruling on uh, on a particular you know m&m related uh feature or uh you know stat or something uh, bring those up you can bring them to the show and chat here or you can actually send an email to let's play at greenronin.com and we will do our level best to answer them um maybe you need relationship advice maybe you've got a weird rash um, you know, whatever it is, um, we're here for you, um, both as your, uh, uh, not credentialed doctor mm-hmm. and, um, mm-hmm. and uh, non-licensed therapist send pictures either way. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's right. Um, <laughs> He's like, Nope. I will say I am running at mutants and masterminds events at Gen Con next week also. And if you come up to the table, I do have a secret, a sneaky secret seventh spot. There's a lot of S's all in a row. Wow. I like it. <laughs> um, if you show up, I know my games are sold out, but if you show up and you're like, I'm with the Patreon and I want to play, please, I will let you play. Nice. You're going to get seven new sneaky. Right. Oops. No. Um, I also want to say that we'll be doing a ton of TikTok, so we're going to be following Alex around and a bunch of other folks. So, uh, so do join, and then we'll end with this. Hope asks, um, how do I break up with my weird rash? Um, Via text. By yeah, text. The best right way. <laughs> exactly. Gentlemen, thank you so much for another great program. Alex, thanks for sharing all the, the deep dive information, uh, just enough to get us uh, excited about it, but not so much that there aren't, isn't so much more to come. So I, I appreciate that. Everybody else, uh, have a great rest of your week. We will talk to you this coming Thursday for Thursday. And then if you're going to be in Indianapolis, let us know because we'd love to hang out. Mm-hmm. Uh, thanks, everybody. Have a Take great care. week.